Hey guys, Automatic Garage back today. We got this 2003 F350 with a 6.0 in it. You may recognize it, been in some of our other videos in the past doing some work on it. Um, Brett called me the other day and said, hey, my truck just lost power. Uh, it'll crank back up, but it only runs momentarily. He was down at or below a quarter tank. I said, well, it sounds like you might have the quarter tank issue. He put some fuel in it. It did the same thing a couple more times, pulled it home. It sat for a day or two. I gave him my fuel pressure test. I said, well, go check your fuel pressure. Let's see about that. Check the fuel pressure. He maintained 55 pounds, 50 to 55 all the time, even on wide open throttle. So the truck ran fine that day. Drove it to work, hooked my scanner up to it. We let it run in the parking lot for an hour. I couldn't go drive it because we were at work that day. But uh, didn't act up in the parking lot at all. Drove it two more days, no problems. Went about an hour from home. Uh, got down there, turned it off, went to get back in the truck. Would not start back up again at all. Would not hit at all. Has not started since. So I uh, towed it here, and we're going to go over what we have going on here. So basically, it's a crank, no start right now. So uh, let's look at what we have going on here with Tough Book. So first things first, we got a bunch of codes on here, and a lot of this can be from uh, excessive starting, uh, battery voltage, we've got cylinder four contribution, system voltage low, uh, glow plug hole. So now when you get down here to the ICP too low, uh, ICP too low, and then we got camshaft and crank codes, I'm not really that worried about codes right now. What I'm more concerned with is let's look at our injector control pressure, our IPR, our FICM main, and our FICM sink. And let's see what happens when we crank on it with that. Not building any ICP, extremely low. We're at 84%, FICM voltage is good, and we have sink. So now, the next thing I wanna look at while we're doing this is I wanna look at our oil pressure gauge there. We're gonna see if it rises at all. And also, if you didn't have a tough book or I didn't have something that's gonna sit here and look at your cam sensor and all that, see if you're getting sync, is watch your RPM gauge and see if it moves. So watch the RPM gauge and watch the oil pressure gauge up there and let's see what happens cranking again. And sometimes you got to crank on this a good 20 seconds, so you want to have some really good hot batteries because that oil pressure gauge is not a priority on your, all your gauges up here if you have low voltage, especially. Let's see, we got RPMs. We have no oil pressure still. Still build no oil pressure. So now, let's go out here under the hood. We're going to check a couple things. So this is a 03, so we don't have the standpipe and dummy plug issue on this. Uh, you do, however, have the weaker high pressure oil pump that can cause you problems. Uh, but usually, even when that pump is not doing its job, you're gonna build more than that. We're, we're just building right at 100 ICP. You're gonna build more than that typically. Uh, so my mind is not going to a high pressure oil pump leak right now, especially since the oil pressure gauge is not jumping up either. So a couple things to check first before you even start testing and taking anything off the truck. Let's, let's check the oil real quick and make sure we got a good oil level. So we just checked our oil level. We're right there at max, so we're good on that. So now the next thing I wanna check is we are going to pull that oil cap off. First off, do you have a factory oil cap? That's not a factory, but it's the same height as a factory. At least I'm pretty sure it is. So let's check that real quick. So this thing should be dripping with oil. We have no, no drippage. This is not soaked with oil, very little oil on it. All right, so this is not a factory cap like I mentioned, but we're right there, basically five and three quarters right there at the, the lip where it seats on the housing. I'm gonna put this other factory cap that I have sitting around here on this filter, we're gonna measure. So here's the factory cap with the same filter in it. And you can see we're sitting there at five and three quarters also. So there's nothing wrong with this filter or that cap. You have to watch some of these aftermarket caps. If on, When you do that measurement, you'll be a quarter or even a half inch or maybe more sometimes higher, which is not going to depress your drain back. This down here in the bottom, right? Right there. So if it doesn't depress that, it's just going to bypass the filter. It's also going to be harder to build the oil pressure also. So let's see now... 
if when we disconnect this and ground it right here on the battery, this goes down your starter. Let's see if this fills this well up with oil, which I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is going to be to that, but let's see what happens. All right, so we're just grinding this out on that stud right there. And we're going to see if this fills up with oil. Make sure your key is out and off when you do this. So now we're looking at the front of that motor at that low pressure pump. That's why we're not building any high pressure oil because the low pressure pump provides the oil up through the filter, through the oil cooler and feeds the high pressure pump back there on the back. So if it can't produce any oil pressure, the high pressure pump doesn't have anything to work with either. Um, there's still one or two other things we can check before we just go to pulling this all apart. So I'm gonna get this put up on the lift and we're gonna check that relief valve that's right down there on the low pressure pump, pull it out, see if we have any trash anything hung up in it, see if the valve is stuck. That's a couple things we can do there. Uh, if we don't see anything with that, then we're gonna get into pulling this low pressure pump off and seeing what the damage is to it. Um, a lot of times your fear is a needle bearing from a lifter or the upper little retaining clip thing that's in the uh, injector for that upper injector O-ring. Uh, usually these pumps don't just wear out. So there's, there's a reason that something happened to this pump and we're gonna have to find out what it is and we're gonna hope that it doesn't involve the front cover of this motor because A, they're getting hard to get and B, uh, they're expensive. The low pressure pump and the front cover for the pump, the small front cover portion is not that, it's not that pricey of a thing. It's more just doing the job. Um, so let's get into doing this and then we'll see what our approach is gonna be to uh, tackling it. All right, the relief valve is right here on the low pressure pump and I'll show y'all here in a minute, but I had a puddle of oil on the floor where this truck had been sitting, and it's clearly dripping off of this. So now, oh, I need to go a half inch for that. It's a little snug. If this spring is back, then it means it's either stuck or it's got something in it up there. Damn it, the hell. I love this Milwaukee light, except for the fact that the magnets absolutely suck on it and don't ever hold it where I want it to stay. It sprung right out. I know y'all probably didn't see it, but as soon as it hit that last thread, it sprung it out. You're gonna have just a little bit of oil come out. You're gonna have the plug, a spring, and the actual valve on the end. The valve is stuck in there. Stick my magnet up in here. It is not wanting to come out. There's your valve there. So this end with the slot goes in. This is the outside end towards the plug. So now that we have it out, we're gonna stick our magnet back in there and see if we bring anything out. Got one little tiny I'll set this to the side, a little tiny piece of metal. That time, see if I get any more. Now 
nothing that time. All right, so what I did now was I cleaned that valve itself up and I sprayed some brake cleaner up in here and ran a clean rag up in it. And now it just slides all the way down and all the way out very easily. With This is my small magnet too, it's not even a super strong magnet. So earlier you saw the magnet would not pull it out, it wouldn't budge it and I had to pull it with the pick, which is not normal. So I put just a dab of grease on this so it'd be lubricated and it slides smooth. So what I'm thinking is, is that little flake of metal, which I didn't show you earlier, that little flake of metal right there is what I pulled out with a magnet. So if that, it's a pretty tight tolerance for the valve. If that was wedged in between it, it would have kept it from wanting to slide. So with everything cleaned up, I'm gonna put this back in there real quick and we're gonna go crank on it again and see if we build pressure now. All right, so I got the valve back in. We're gonna do the same test we did earlier. See if we pump any oil up in here this time. Throw the filter back in, see if she'll run. All right, let's see if we can build some pressure this time. I'm sure there's air in the system from trying to crank without oil on it, so. So there you go. So she's running smooth right now. I was really glad we didn't find a needle from a uh, lifter because he's on a, a really tight budget. It's kind of aggravated with this truck. It's the last thing he wanted to hear with it. But we all know what the fix is for that if you find a needle bearing down there so uh i don't know where that little flake of metal came from there's no telling uh hopefully that's all it was i'm gonna let it sit here and run for a minute it had a long start because it had been attempted to be started so much i think with the high pressure oil pump running not pumping oil rather trying to pump air through the system uh it had a lot of voids to fill up in there and the whole pathway from the low pressure pump up to there obviously had no oil in it either because of the relief valve so uh it was a long start there so i'm gonna let it run for a minute Make sure we don't have any air in the system. Let it sit, make sure we got a nice, easy start back up and we'll see what happens. I turned it off, had a little bit of a long start, but it's maybe just because it needs to be driven, push the air all out through the system. So decided I'm gonna drive it down here to the corner store, give me a cold snack, and then we're gonna turn it off when we get back and uh, see how she acts then. Running fine. This truck is not tuned or studded. It is EGR deleted and uh, the cat's deleted. Other than that, she's bone stock. Uh, we've done a oil cooler on it. We've done a set of injectors on it. Did the coolant filtration system. I think that's about all we've done. But this is the truck that we had the video on of somebody doing a real botch job of doing injectors and rounding some of those Torx heads off them couple of the injectors and a video on fighting with that uh, back turbo bolt. It's always fun on these O3s. So uh, we'll catch up with y'all when we get back to the shop see if everything's fine or not. All right, so we made it back, put it through its paces. Um, I've had it sitting here for about, I don't know, 30 minutes now. Fires right up, oil pressure comes right up. So I guess we got it fixed. By the way, if anybody is looking for an extremely clean, low mile power stroke here, we got an 03 with 105,000 miles that is ready to go. Good tires, beautiful paint job, brand new high pressure oil pump, ICP sensor, belt, oil change, fuel filters. Um, does have the EGR delete. It is not studded, never been tuned, all stock exhaust on it still. 
Um, let me show you the inside just for fun. Extremely clean, drives great, rides great, drives tight. Everything works from the power windows, door locks, air conditioner, radio, the power pedals, everything works. Not a stain on the interior. And like I said, extremely clean. The biggest thing you're gonna find with this truck if you wanna nitpick it is it has a couple of just little chips in the paint like that right there, if you can even see it. Little, Just a couple little things like that, but it's clean. So uh, y'all hit me up if you know anybody interested. So long story short with this is before you totally condemn your low pressure oil pump, check that relief valve. It's worth a, it's worth a try. Uh, doesn't take but a minute, especially if you have a way to get it up on a lift and, and access it real easy. I just shot a little brake cleaner up in there. I took one of my soft bristle brushes, uh, engine cleaning brushes, and went up in there, sprayed it one more time, did the same thing with the valve, and then I just smeared a little bit of grease on that valve so it would slide in and out, and I made sure that the valve would slide with my little small magnet very smooth, and uh, that was good enough for me to feel like that it wasn't gonna get stuck. So I uh, put it back together. This truck is due for an oil change, so we're gonna uh, give it some nice clean 1030 Motorcraft oil and a filter, and uh, Anyways, go with that. I guess we're gonna double check on that magnet on the oil pan real good too when we change that oil, make sure we don't have any thing that looks uh, abnormal as far as metal on it. So uh, anyways, hope this video helps y'all out. It gives you something else to check. If you run into the same kind of problem, kind of shows you how to diagnose uh, the low pressure pump also. So maybe that'll help you also. Go check out all our other videos. Uh, we got a lot of 7360, all kind of forward content on our channel here. I uh, got some more exciting stuff coming up here soon on a couple of our other project vehicles here. Uh, check us out at automaticgarage.com. Uh, you can get on there. We got hats, shirts, stickers, everything else. Got some merch if you're interested in it. So this is Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.